Hi there, I'm Sawyer, and this is Real Numbers, the show that uses math to solve problems from real life. We've been exploring expected value in the current series. Let's use this concept to analyze the dreaded ending of each school term. Finals week. At Jaden's school, the final exam schedule is about to be announced. Each class with an exam has it scheduled sometime during finals week, Monday through Friday, with each day having an equal chance. If Jaden has two finals, what is the expected number of days between them? For example, if the two exams landed on the same day, this would be zero, whereas if one were on Tuesday and the other on Friday, they would have three days between them. And a bonus question. If instead Jaden were taking three classes with final exams, what would be the average number of days between his earliest and latest exams? Submit your solution below, showing your work. Now let's determine the solution to the problem from last week's episode, which you can access from this page. Rachel's snowboarding student randomly chooses one of six snowboards to use each day for six days, and then she has to sharpen all of the snowboards that were used at least once. Rachel wants to compute the expected number of distinct snowboards that were used over the six days. This problem demonstrates that when one method of solution leads down a very complicated path, it's often worthwhile to hunt around for a second approach. Starting with a naive computational approach, we could draw up a table of days past and distinct snowboards used and fill it in a day at a time. For example, after one day, we know exactly one distinct snowboard has been used. But after the second day, there is a one-sixth probability the same snowboard was used, and so the total number of snowboards hasn't changed, and we remain in the top row, and a 5 6 chance we use a new snowboard and go to the second row. Many careful calculations later, we will know the probability of finishing off day 6 with each distinct number of snowboards being used, and can compute the expected value. But let's look for a slicker way to get the answer. We subtly hinted last episode that indicator variables could assist with this problem. These are random values that we define to equal 1 when a certain condition is met, and 0 otherwise. For example, we know Rachel has 6 different snowboards. Let's define x sub i to be the indicator variable that is 1 if Rachel's ith snowboard is used at some point during the week. This means the total number of snowboards that get used is just the sum of the x sub i. Why is this? Well, let's say Rachel only used her second and fourth snowboards in a week. This means x sub 2 and x sub 4 are 1, and the other x sub i are 0. So the sum on the right is 2, the total number of snowboards used. The indicator variables are essentially counting up the number of used snowboards. We want to know the expected value on the left side of this equation, but by linearity of expectation, this is just the sum of the expected values of the indicator variables on the right-hand side. So now we just need to find the expected value of x sub i for each i. The expected value of an indicator variable is just the probability of the condition occurring, so we want to know the probability Rachel used her ith snowboard at some point during the week. For any one snowboard, the probability that Rachel never used it is the chance that on each of the six days, she chose one of the other five boards, which has probability 5 sixth. Therefore, the probability Rachel never used her ith snowboard is 5 6 to the 6, or about 0.3349. Hence, the expected value of x sub i, the probability Rachel used her ith snowboard, is 1 minus 0.3349, or about 0.6651. Since all the snowboards have the same probability of being used, the expected total number of snowboards used is 6 times the expected value of x sub i, or about 3.9906. So on average, she has to sharpen very slightly less than four snowboards each week. But wait, there's a second way we could have chosen to employ indicator variables in this problem. Instead of making a variable for each snowboard, we could have chosen one for each day. Let's define y sub i to be the indicator variable that is one when, on the ith day, Rachel used a snowboard for the first time this week, and is zero otherwise. So, for example, y sub 1 equals 1 always, because the first day of the week is always a new snowboard. Then what would be the probability y sub i equals 1? Whatever board we select, the probability that it wasn't used on any of the previous days is 5 sixths to the i minus 1, since on each of the i minus 1 days, Rachel had a 5 sixths chance of picking a different board independently. 
Therefore, the expected value of y sub i is 5 6 to the i minus 1. Once again, the expected number of snowboards used is the sum of the expected value of our indicator variables. This is the first six terms of a geometric series. We can sum that up using the formula 1 minus 5 6 to the 6 over 1 minus 5 6, or 6 times 1 minus 5 6 to the 6. That's about 3.9906 exactly agreeing with what we got with our first use of indicator variables. Nice. OK, let's recall the problem of the week. Jaden wants to know, on average, how many days to expect between his two final exams that are each scheduled on one of the five days of the finals week independently. And the bonus question, if he instead has three final exams, how many days would be between his earliest and latest exams on average? Submit your solution using the button below as well as any ideas or math puzzles of your own, and I'll see you next episode with a new problem to solve.